Try the Dove face test, and you'll never wash with soap again. I did, and I won't. Every bar of Dove is one quarter cleansing cream. Dove soap was launched back in 1957 in the US and quickly became one of Unilever's biggest brands. Today, the Dove range of products is sold in over 150 countries and include the famous soap, deodorants, body washers, moisturizers and hair care. So what sort of technology goes into updating those products? I've come to Unilever's R&D lab to find out. Tell me about Shirley Bassey. Who is she? What is she? Why was she named that? So Shirley Bassey was in a musical called Hair, so it seemed very appropriate for a switch washing robot. This is a hair switch, um, and that's what she does, is she washes these. And she enables us to understand how a shampoo and conditioner creates strong, beautiful, resilient hair. So she dips it in and brings it out, swishes it around, dips it in, brings it out, and then she brings it around to an actual mimic of how you would be rubbing or drying your hair by, you know, if you want to pull on that, you can sort of feel the tension yes, on the yes, hair. Yes, yes. That's what she does. And then she puts it in the drying rack and dries it so that it mimics the whole washing cycle. And so the data that we get off of Shirley is very, very robust. And so that robustness of data allows us to make better predictions. It allows us to analyze much larger sets of data using machine learning and AI, we're able to then really learn things that we honestly couldn't learn before. For more on different hair types, I caught up with Glyn Roberts, R&D Head of Hair Care. One of the things I thought I'd show you is just how um, complex hair actually is. So it's a lot like rope in many ways. So the inside of it's about 90% protein and they're bonded together quite strongly and that's what gives it its strength. But that needs to be protected from the outside. So these scaly parts, there's a layer called the cuticle layer and they're coated with oil. And that's the first layer that will go when you damage your hair. Once that's gone, it's not gonna come back. Then what are you gonna show me next? So, um, Steve's going to help me with a little demo here just so we can explain um, and show you what happens when the oil layer that I was describing before is removed. So what Steve's going to do here is just show you how natural hair will behave when it's put in water. You can see it's very hydrophobic, it will sit on the surface, yeah. repels water, stops that from getting inside and stops that from further damaging the hair. Okay. If you've bleached it, right. it's no longer got that layer anymore and what will happen is it will absorb water and it will sink. Yeah. So one of the things you've got to do is developing products, things that can recoat that hair fibre so that that stops happening. But that's only half the story because hair's damaged to different levels. Yes. Yeah. So sometimes you can, you can have technologies that don't go to the most damaged part of the hair, which is usually the tips. Not always, but usually. So what Steve's going to show here is an example of a balayaged hair treatment. So this is being sequentially bleached, one time at the top, two times, three times and four times. And it's been treated with the same technology. And we're comparing this with a competitor product. Now, when you wash it with the conditioner, you want it to go all over the fiber, but in most cases that doesn't happen. And what you'll see if we show you the competitor product first, it, you'll see it gets stuck where the uh, hair's been bleached twice. We do the same thing with the intensive repair product, drum roll, you'll see it goes straight <laughs> the way through. And as we follow the R&D process all the way through, it's time for manufacturing. And as you'd expect here, even that process is tested to the max. Julian Clark is a process development engineer. What you see here is what we call a batch mixer. So this is um, very, very similar to what we see in our factory production facilities, except in our factories, they're much, much bigger. In the example of the Dove conditioner, we are very, very carefully creating a recipe. And that recipe is used to create the product. Now in products like um, hair conditioners that we're manufacturing here, how we do that is super important. To give you a little bit of an example, what we're doing here is changing the process conditions that you can see here to create the best quality product. And how do you measure your success? When are you satisfied, Julian, with what you're mixing? I think we're, we're perfectionists really, and that's why we do so much work in here to get the products as perfect as possible. Um, but we measure it basically through what we call specifications. So we measure things like how thick the product is, um, how it pours, how it smells, how it, um, how it spreads. And all of those things are really important measures for us to tell us about the quality and that it's as good as it can be. Julian, thank you so much for talking to me today. Thank you.